Hello everyone, and welcome back. This is a continuing presentation on RF attenuators and trying to come up with a good test setup. I've gotten a lot of good input from um, Alan W2AW and Jeremy G0HZU. So what we had in our original test setup was um, our spectrum analyzer here and a couple of unfortunately low quality cables uh, from China going to our unit under test and <clears throat> with this particular setup um, we had um, some inherent analyzer port impedances that varied from 25 to 100 ohms across the span that we were working with up to 1.5 gigahertz and that was causing problems uh, once we actually put the um, device under test or our RF attenuator in the path in place of the barrel connector that was here during normalization and um, <clears throat> according to um, to Jeremy the test setup itself with the barrel connector and the cable um, you couldn't just normalize that out and then put an attenuator in here because there was uh, resultant complex impedances across the cable um, but due to the varying impedances on these two ports and the input and output impedances of the uh, RF attenuator that we were testing. Um, it resulted in what looked like a ripple on the trace and that resulted in about a dB and a half of additional variance on the actual uh, display which was actually higher than the actual uh, RF attenuator that we were testing uh, itself so it was actually masking the uh, characterization of the attenuator and the actual uh, flatness of the uh, attenuator that we were testing. So the suggested test setup was to put two 6 dB attenuators, one on the input, the, the uh, spectrum analyzer, one on the output, a barrel connector, <clears throat> some nice high quality cables, and then take that and normalize it, and then remove the barrel and put the, the uh, device under test or our, our attenuator that we want to test in place of the barrel. In my case, I had to actually put it in series with the barrel because of the connectors that were on the attenuators that I've got, um, which were provided by mini circuits. Um, the uh, VAT dash six plus attenuators. Um, so again, I normalized them with the barrel connector and then put the, would be putting the attenuators in place of that afterwards. Now I did also verify this test setup using a uh, mini circuits VAT 10 plus attenuator, which had a very low uh, flatness, so like 0.06 dB, um, up to like two gigahertz. So if we look at that, um, as far as the table goes for the VAT 6 that we had, um, again, very low. They're like, um, they got 6.01 there at the lowest and 6.23 there at the highest. Well, that's a 2 gig, but 1.5 gig, we're all working. 6.19, so that's about 0.18 dB per uh, 6 dB attenuators on the input and the tracking generator output. But again, uh, keep in mind that we were. <coughs> um, normalizing that out so that should be fine and oh this was an alternative test setup that I had come up with the only reason I tried this is I used high quality cables but I put a VAT 10 uh, that's the 10 dB attenuator I was referring to earlier in here and normalize this and then remove that attenuator and put in the attenuator that I wanted to test that came out pretty well actually doing that um, I don't prefer it to the test setup with the two 6 dB attenuators in there, but it was uh, at least reasonable for what we're doing in the world of uh, amateur radio. So just something to keep in mind. could be worth doing if you don't have enough attenuators to try it the other way. And there we go. This is a 10 dB, dB attenuator I wanted to show you, the mini circuit was one. Um, and at this lowest point here, it's like 10.01, and then up here at the worst case it was like 10.06 so it's basically a 0.05 actually variance uh, or flatness 
um, across the span that we were working with. So very, very low, very, very flat. And um, so it provided a, a good um, model to test by, too, to make sure that our test setup with the two sixes was really performing the way that we believed that it was. Um, just a test setup. I tried to embed videos in here, by the way, and it was just the quality wasn't that good, and it um, uh, was really uh, kind of like jerky with lag or whatever. So if you guys want me to do videos of the actual, you know, setup and testing and all that, let me know in the comments. I'll gladly do that. I don't have a problem doing that. Um, I just wanted to make this a little more of a professional presentation. But this is the setup here. You got the connectors here on the input. And then uh, the two um, 6dB attenuators here. My test cables. Now I tried longer test cables. They provided me with a couple of different sets of test cables. And I tried some long ones, short ones. As long as I had the attenuators here and normalized everything, it seemed to be fine. Um, it didn't really matter if the cables were short or long, as long as they were nice, good, high quality test cables. Um, this is the measurement of the 10 dB attenuator. What I did is, is um, normalized it with the sixes in the barrel, and then I added the um, mini circuits 10 dB attenuator, again, which must be like 0.05 to, uh, is for dB flatness. <clears throat> now, if you look at the uh, data down here at the bottom, we have a uh, well here at 0.04 and the 0.05 there, so it's 0.09 here, which is still pretty close considering. Um, however, one thing I wanted to point out is when I did the normalizing, and I just noticed this um, later on, was that um, even normalizing, it doesn't, or at least in that case, it didn't seem to normalize to exactly zero. And because we're talking about such a small amount here, I mean, it didn't, you know, doesn't take much to throw this off. Um, I was getting about a 0 0.03, 0 0.04 dB uh, variance or flatness, um, even with the normalizing, with just the barrel connector. So if you subtract that from um, this 0 0.09, you'd come up really close to the 0 0.05 that they show in their typical uh, performance data for that uh, particular mini circuits uh, 10 dB attenuator. So I'd say that's pretty good, pretty close, very close, and more than close enough for what we do with our stuff with ham radio. And um, nice says nice things about the uh, mini circuits attenuator too. My dad. I wish mine were that flat. Actually, my 20 came out pretty flat, I have to say. <clears throat> okay, now we have some measurements of ones that we built. Strangely enough, my 10 dB one was, well, it had different connectors, though. But it showed up to be, um, what have we got here, 7, so about 0.28 dB um, flatness-wise um, at those points that I measured. I tried to pick spots that were highest and lowest to get you know, the maximum amount of variance here for testing purposes. Um, let's see, and then uh, the next one, we have a 20 dB, this is my 20, this is a nice one, this came out really good, um, and it's 7.9, um, 19.79, I don't have the exact values, so I think about exactly 20, um, and A2s, that's like 0 0.03 dB, <laughs> no, I take that back, no, 0 0.05 dB across, uh, same as their uh, mini circuits, 10 dB attenuator actually, all the way across 20 dB. That came out really well. I was really happy with that. Uh, biggest problem I had was those resistors staying uh, secured and solid. They're so small that uh, it's easier for the solder connections to break or the ends of the resistors actually, the, the metal tab parts actually snapping off of those things. Gonna have to work on that construction wise. And then this is a measurement of the 30 dB um, mini circuits and that. Um, Came up to what do we got here? Nine, seven, three. So about 0.2 dB across that span there. You can see where it kind of dipped down on the outside here. I thought I had a slide with Ken's on here. I guess I didn't put it on here. I was going to. Um, his varied a little bit up on the upper end. So uh, I mean, so the testing's working all right. It's showing when things are not, you know, quite where you want them or not quite exact, um, which is good. So that's kind of it for the testing. So what we've shown is that. Um, <clears throat> we were able to test homebrew RF uh, attenuators with what we could consider a reasonable and acceptable level of accuracy based on what we would use for an AM ham radio applications, especially a 10 dB one, right? It's like, holy macro. And that although we have port impedance problems, uh, not problems, this variance is on the analyzer. Again, it's not a $20,000 analyzer, so, you know, those are there. And he, uh, he being Chris Armstrong at um, Rigel showed me, um, 
It's data on a, an Agilent analyzer, and it has the same thing. So it's not unique just to the uh, to the RIGO at all. Um, it's just sort of the nature of the beast, unless it has port correction uh, built into it, and it didn't. <clears throat> um, also, um, again, to note that when I was testing my attenuators with the other old tests set up with the bad cables and such, the old cables, I had close to 1.8 dB of error on that 20 dB attenuator. So obviously this setup um, improved that greatly. And thanks again, Jeremy, for that information and help on that. Um, and so again, you know, the idea being that you could use RF attenuators on input and tracking generator output of the analyzer, along with some nice good cables, and you end up with a nice marked improvement on accuracy measuring our homebrew attenuators, which always makes us happy, right? Um, and last but not least, thanks to Alan W2AW for his input and videos on the RF attenuator designs and construction and the advice he gave me on the ground plane. And for that helped a lot, actually, I soldered another circuit board on top of the connectors to add some more ground plane surface area. And that actually made the attenuator flatter, I believe, up on the high end, if I'm not mistaken. You might want to comment on that. And then uh, thanks, uh, Jeremy. I did find out your name, <laughs> although that was not easy. Um, uh, but anyway, thanks for going to put on the um, very important pedances on the analyzer and the suggestion of adding the attenuators. Appreciate that. That made a, such a big difference. And uh, I'm sure everybody will be pleased with the results of that. And thanks to Chris. He provided a bunch of uh, information on the actual port impedances and SWRs across the different frequencies. And he was really quick about providing that information. They've been really good about stuff like that when I ask for support or advice or data or what have you. And then... Um, uh, thanks, Mini Circuits, for uh, providing their uh, cables and the uh, attenuators. Um, they were, out of all the people I've sent emails to that have asked for help or, you know, uh, products exchange for videos and so on, they were by far, they, they stood out, you know, very, very uh, nice company. And I certainly, you could just tell by the way uh, they correspond back and forth in emails that they most definitely had their act together and uh, had really good uh, business sense. And um, I will be doing a video in the future too on the actual attenuators, uh, again, quality wise. And the cables had these quick connect SMA cables. They're really cool. Until you see those, they're kind of awesome. That's something we need what we're doing in live here. But if you're in a tight situation and you can't really get your hand in there, get a wrench in there, those are nice. You just push them and slide the sleeve and they lock on. Really nice. Um, and Ken, thank you for always being there, supporting me when I do my videos. I always send uh, kind of like a preview with him first, and he's kind of gives me the thumbs up or the maybe you should change this or change that. So uh, I always appreciate that. <clears throat> that's, that's great stuff. So everyone, thanks. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. And be safe.